So in this video, I want to talk about the malaria life cycle. So what are the organisms that can cause malaria? So these are all plasmodium species. They have plasmodium as their first name, but they have a different last name. There's plasmodium falciparum, vivax, malaria, and ovale. So falciparum is the most fatal one. So the falciparum, you can remember, stands for fatal. And furthermore, the most common are falciparum and vivax. So how is malaria transmitted? Plasmodium needs a vector. A vector is any agent that can carry an infectious pathogen into another living organism. The vector that carries the plasmodium species is the Anopheles mosquito. So when an infected mosquito bites us, it's going to inject the sporozoite form into our blood. And the sporozoite will then travel in the blood to the liver. So the sporozoites are not able to do anything in the blood to infect red blood cells. No, they're going to travel to the liver because their target is the hepatocyte. So they have the capacity to infect hepatocytes. And so what's going to happen in the hepatocytes, they're going to asexually replicate and form a replication stage. And this is the shy zone. At one point, the hepatocyte is going to rupture. And the schizone is also going to rupture and will release the so-called merozoites into the blood. This merozoite form has the capacity now to finally infect the red blood cell. So once it has infected the red blood cell, once it's inside the red blood cell, it's going to start feeding, it's going to start eating hemoglobin. And this feeding stage in the red blood cell is called the trophozoite. And trophozoite also is Greek and stands for feeding. That's a point where the malaria parasite is going to eat up the red blood cell, basically. The trophozoite has a very characteristic shape, and you're going to see this under the microscope. It looks like a wedding ring. You have this ring and then a little rock on it. So going from this trophozoite, from this feeding stage, there are two ways that the malaria parasite can now go. Some of the trophozoites are going to mature into so-called schizons again. And this is the replication stage, so where asexual replication is going to happen. So once the schizons ruptures again, you're going to release merozoites and they can infect more red blood cells. So this is a way where the plasmodium makes sure that the infection is going to continue, that there are more red blood cells infected and that the parasite further replicates. But the parasite also needs to make sure that other people can get infected and that the disease spreads. So the trophozoite can also differentiate in, into gametocytes. And gametocytes are the sexual replication stage. So once there are gametocytes in the red blood cells, that, this is a form that the vector needs to take up in order to make more sporozoites. So the gametocyte is a form that goes into the mosquito and matures and differentiates from a gametocyte to a zygote, to a oocyst, and finally to a sporozoite. That can be then injected into the blood again, and the life cycle is completed. So to summarize important stages that we see in the malaria life cycle, we are starting with a sporozoite that can be found in the saliva of the mosquito and is injected into the blood. Sporo sounds a little bit like spores, and spores are generally things that can survive outside the host. So that lets you remember that this is a sporozoite form that comes from outside. Then again, when we are inside the hepatocyte, we are forming the schizo on the replication st stage where asexual replication happens. And the merozoites is a form, again, that is released from the schizo and can infect the red blood cells. Then we go through the trophozoite, trophy for feeding, when the parasite is going to eat up the hemoglobin. And again, we can then go either into the schizon and making more merozoites or can differentiate into the sexual replication from the gametocyte to finish the life cycle. 
So there's one more stage of the parasite that you should be aware of, and this is a so-called hypnozoite stage. And only two plus plasmodium species can go into this stage, and these are vivax and ovale. They can form this sleeping stage in the liver. And hypnozoite should also remind you to hypnotize, to sleep. And, and so the clinical importance is that if malaria is in this hypnozoite stage, it can relapse because it's kind of hiding in the liver. At one point, it can start replicating again, forming a schizon, and going on to continue with its life cycle. So this is very important to know about because we have only one drug that targets the sleeping stage in the liver. And this drug is primaquine. So whenever you have a patient that is infected with either Vivex and Ovale, you have to add this drug on the patient's treatment regimen. So when we break down the malaria life cycle, we're going to end up with three stages. The first stage is a so-called exoerythrocytic stage because it's mainly happening in the liver. That's the first target of the parasite. And so it's not in the red blood cell, therefore exoerythrocytic stage. Then once the merozoites are released, this form has a capacity to infect the red blood cell. So from this point on, we are in the red blood cell and that's where the things happen. And therefore this is called the erythrocytic stage. Once the mosquito takes up the gametocytes in the red blood cell again, the parasite will undergo sexual replication and then eventually form the sporozoite. As this all happens in the mosquito, this stage is called the mosquito stage. This concludes the video on the life cycle of malaria.